If your steering system is something on your list of things to maintenance on your 1997 to 2006 TJ Wrangler, this 17-piece steering and suspension kit will be right up your alley. Now this kit will include some of the most important components of your steering and suspension, especially the ones that can really show their age because of their weak points like ball joints and bushings. Not to mention, larger wheels and tires can put a heavier load on those weak spots as well, so if you want an all-inclusive kit to maintenance that, then this is going to be for you. Now this is going to feature a large chunk of your steering and suspension, including the tie rod, drag link, track bar, front and upper lower control arms, upper and lower ball joints, and sway bar end links. Now again, most of these components can start to wear by age or added force from heavy components. So what this will do is tighten all of that back up in your steering and suspension, which can get rid of uh, driveline vibrations, flighty steering, or other steering and suspension symptoms that you might be experiencing in your TJ. Now when it comes to the construction of this entire kit, uh, it is going to vary depending on what component that you're looking at, but uh, you can expect factory-like quality since these will be factory-style replacements. Now made of heavy quality alloys and EPDM rubber materials, these will mimic the factory components while offering a little bit of extra performance in the meantime, especially because they are brand new. And you can also ensure that this is going to be a direct swap that will match your OE measurements so you won't have to do any modifications when getting this set onto your TJ. Now, as for the price of the entire kit, you'll be looking at roughly $400, which I think is a great price for what you're getting. Now, for the price, you're getting 17 pieces in the kit, so you don't have to track down separate components while getting OE quality and performance that you can trust out of a set like this. Now, mostly all other options will come with singular pieces, OE or not, making this a great solution for an all-in-one kit if that's what you're looking for. Now, install will be more on the complicated side just because this does include a lot of components and a lot of it does have to do with your suspension. So I'm gonna give it a three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter and it'll probably take you about five hours to get the job done with the right tools and the right setup. Now, speaking of the install, one of our customers here has actually completed this on their TJ and is gonna walk you through what that process looks like step by step. So it's gonna wrap it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, let's talk about what tools we use for this job. Um, so we had our um, um, our hand wrenches, um, 21 millimeter, 21, 19, 18, 15, 14, 13, 12. Um, we also had our sockets. I used mostly dupe well, 32 millimeter, 30, 30. Um, excuse me, 22, 21, 19, 18, 15, and 13. We also needed a 36 millimeter socket, which I didn't have, but a one and one, uh, excuse me, one and seven sixteenths is a fair replacement. Um, I needed some shallow um, um, size sockets as well. So I got a 19, 18, 16, 15, and um, a specialty tool for getting those hubs off. You need a, um, a 13 millimeter 12 point um, or a half inch 12 point will also work. Um, we also needed some just uh, everyday tools. We needed a um, screwdriver, um, needle nose pliers. Um, we used um, a six inch uh, C-clamp to compress the calipers, a pickle fork for disengaging some of the ball joints. Um, we used this uh, strap to help relocate the axle on reinstall. Um, uh, when we were doing the control arms and then also the track bar. Um, this was a uh, ball joint service kit um, for removing and re-pressing in the new ball joints. Um, used a regular hammer and a three pound sledge, um, a half inch drive um, hand uh, ratchet, um, torque wrench, um, breaker bar, this is the one that didn't break, I was using the handle, the top handle of my um, floor jack as an additional breaker bar for leverage. Today I'm installing a, a 17 piece steering and suspension kit on my 2002 Jeep Wrangler. Uh, this is a TJ series. Uh, this is the uh, item number J166251 from extremeterrain.com and a pretty good deal on that. So uh, let's get this thing up in the air 
and uh, get her going. All right, first step in just taking off the old parts, um, we're gonna go ahead and detach the, the um, steering um, dampener. Uh, it's a 19 millimeter socket. This is just a lock nut on, or a lock washer on here, so we're gonna just zip that off real quick. And uh, because we're not replacing this uh, today, um, I'm just gonna leave it installed on the back, lift it up out of the way, but we need to get it off from right here. All right, this guy is in there pretty snug. Two ways you could get that off. You could either put your nut back on loosely, give it a whack with a hammer, or um, today I'm just gonna use a, uh, a uh, this handy dandy tool. And we're just gonna force it right up. Easy as that. Okay, out of the way. And just so I don't bang up those threads and lose the nut, I'm gonna go ahead and put the nut and lock washer back on here. And we'll just pivot that guy out of the way. This uh, tie rod end puller, you know, you can buy these at your local parts shop or a lot of times a local auto store will have a loaner tool program and you can just go grab one of these as a loaner tool. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and um, take the drag link off from the Pitman arm. Uh, you can see this, uh, this ball joint in here, you know, it's a greasable, but it's been leaking grease like crazy. Looks like it's uh, seeing a little bit better days there. So uh, first step, we're gonna take off this cotter pin um, take off the castle nut, bust this guy loose. Let's get her done. Uh, just bend over, so I'm gonna just take a set of needle nose, get that straightened back out, and then we'll bop it through. I always like to just use the flat part of the, of the uh, needle nose to kind of get that. And then we'll pry it out from the outside. So that cotter pin, cotter pins are not reusable. So just chuck this, you get brand new ones with the kit. And we do have a bit of a tight space up there. Um, so I don't think uh, my drill's gonna get up there. We're just gonna switch on over to a ratchet. And I might need a shorter uh, 19 millimeter bolt uh, ratchet. All right, uh, good. Couldn't fit my deep socket in there, so I got just a regular uh, length uh, 19 millimeter on a hand wrench. And just go break that guy loose. Get that the rest of the way off. Get some good, uh, get some good rust in there. Probably wouldn't hurt to hit these with a little penetrating fluid. In fact, let me go ahead and spray a little pen oil on my uh, other bolts and uh, that'll make it easier when we get to those. All right, I got a little penetrating oil here. Pick your favorite brand. I'm not here to sell penetrating oil. Um, just gonna give, give all the bolts that I gotta hit today. And that ought to help us as we get down the line. Smell of pen oil in the morning. out as we use on down the line here. Get some of the control arms. All right. Give that stuff a little time to do its magic while we work on taking off this drag link. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and pop these tires off so we can reach in there and uh, take care of that, um, that ball joint at the pitman arm. Um, so while we get these off, that'll give us a little more reach. All right, we are working on this joint right here. This is from the um, driver's side. And I'm gonna be using a pickle fork and a good old uh, sledge to just do a little separation here. Since I'm replacing this, I don't really care if I booger up that boot. There we go. Easy peasy. That's what these things are great for. Again, this is a part you can either buy, these pretty cheap at most uh, auto parts stores, or you can uh, sometimes rent them through their Alona tool program. Since we're over here, we might as well um, take off um, this end of the tie rod and um, go ahead and pull this cotter pin and uh, pop this joint loose. All right, we're gonna work on uh, this end right here. Again, we're just gonna pop that cotter pin out using my needle nose pliers for that. I could just bend it out. Some people use the like wire cutters. Again, never reuse a cotter pin. They almost always give you brand new ones and good folks at Extreme Terrain definitely do that for us. Another 19 millimeter bolt. Do a quick work of that. Couple ways you could work on this. A um, couple good wax right here on the on the arm. Um, sometimes we'll break it free. Um, other times you can just thread the nut back on a little bit. Notice I put the castle part down. A good whack, and that thing came right. Off. Get that bolt off, and there comes the trailing arm. All right, let's go to the other side. All right, we're over here on the passenger side. We're gonna go ahead and pop um, this ball joint. Um, it's the other, the passenger side of the drag link. And it's also got our uh, tra uh, trailing arm kind of still attached. For now, we're just gonna leave that. Let's start with the cotter pin. That one was good and rested on there, but the uh, impact wrench took uh, made easy work of it. You can do this with a with a manual wrench, but sometimes you're just going to have to um, get a breaker bar and get a good uh, initial torque to break it free. All right, we're going to work on uh, getting the um, the track bar out, but just to get a little reach, and since we're replacing our um, sway bar links anyway, let's go ahead and get this out of the way so we can reach back into there. Um, this guy is an 18 millimeter bolt on the back side and a T55 Torx um, on this front side. So we're gonna hold that Torx right here while we zip off the back. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and take the top off. Um, that's a 15 millimeter. Um, and that'll give us a little better leverage to um, back that bottom 
on bolt out. This is a different style. Um, this was an aftermarket one, not a factory part. So you can see there's this little bracket on this one on our replacement. There's not that set up. So um, I, I need to get a little wrench in there to hold that bolt from spinning. And we'll uh, go to town on that thing. Looks like maybe 14 millimeter, maybe 15. Yeah, I'm going with 14. And a 15 on top. Bar, what you'll find is that you got to get both ends loose at the same time. Um, so we'll take this out as well. This back bolt on this particular one is an 18 millimeter and 19 on the, on the side there is me. So I'm going to do the other side. Um, that ought to free up the sway bar to be able to move for us. And then we can uh, get both sides off. All right, you can see we're on the passenger side. We're going to just take off the sway bar link. And uh, then the sway bar itself ought to be able to articulate a little. Um, get us freed up. We are going to... Start, we'll take out this lower um, again. We're using a, a T fifty five Torx fitting on this part. this hardware because we're going to move it again shortly. Okay. I'm in love with this fit here. Um, this particular one, it's a 15 millimeter on not on top and a 14 millimeter bolt inside there. You can see that guy. You can see now the sway bar articulates, so that well, that'll get us from being all bound up on the other side. Let's go back to the other side. All right, you can see this is all loose now, where this was bound up before because of the tension on the sway bar. Now it's free. I can just literally slip that right off. Remember that part there. We'll reinstall the sway bar link after we get um, this work done because this is uh, getting a little in the way. All right, so back to here. We're going to take off that, uh, that track bar uh, mount. And we were dealing with a 19 millimeter, but I got to go with a short. A short socket, so no uh, no impact gun on this one. All right. I think I'm 
missed that one with the pen fluid. Still a little, a little grumpy there. There we go. Okay, castle knot off. And get back in there with the pickle fork and separate this truck bar. Little gentle detect. As a reminder, there's the, there's the lube. It is just a solid inside there. You know, if at first you don't succeed, just get a bigger hammer. All right, so that's the track bar on this end. Go ahead and take care of its, its other end. All right, we're back here on the passenger side, getting ready to take out the last connection for the um, for the track bar. And um, this one it looks like a blind screw. There's I can't see a way around the backside, so. Your yeah, that one just screws into this uh, actual physical part of the axle. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and work on this upper control arm. Um, on the back side, there's one of those like washers that grips um, to keep it from backing off. So there's really not room to get a wrench on on the back. So you just gotta let it grab there, uh, then break it here. Not a ton of room in front because I still got this uh, um, steering stabilizer in the way, which limits some of my wrench throw. So, if you reach in underneath, you can get in on it and have a little more room for your wrench. On you. All right, so these little nuts that have the flange on them, um, one idea. So if you stick a screwdriver in it, it um, can help keep it, enough tension on it to keep it from turning. So what's going on is the axle is kind of tilting forward a little bit, so I'm gonna use a ratchet strap, kind of put some pressure back on it so I can get that bolt out. And we're only gonna take off one, um, one control arm at a time, replace it so that we don't have uh, too much flopping around on our, on our front axle. That is my great plan. Oh. 
better angle to see this. Uh, so as I ratchet, I'm trying to just pull this bolt hole. Some guys like to do the control arms when it's flat on the ground on its tires. Just because that provides a little more stability. got here this is the bolt it's got this uh, little flange and that's the thing that we had to put the screw on the screwdriver under right under that edge of it all right the back bolt of the upper control arm is right down this hole 15 millimeters so we're gonna put our impact um, wrench in there and then I'll just hold the back side of it should be also 15 millimeters with an open, uh, with a box end wrench. this again this time we're just gonna hold this bolt here and then we'll use another hand wrench it on the back side it's not enough room to get a uh, to get the impact done So here's your control arm, just fill right out real nicely. And it doesn't look in terrible shape, but the bushings, uh, bushings definitely showing a little age. So we're gonna go ahead and, we got the new one, we're gonna go ahead and use it. All right, one other thing I'll show you here is this little tab. That is the tabbed um, nut with the washer. So that's why we couldn't drive from this side. So. There is a little gap right here. And the beauty is you can actually hold it there and then just thread the nut, uh, the bolt on from the other side. So um, we'll go ahead and, since we're here and we don't wanna have too many of these control arms loose at once, we're gonna go ahead and put in the new passenger upper. Would you grab that? All right, here's the new upper. You can see just how perfect and clean that looks. We're gonna go ahead and install this, starting with this back bolt and then we'll, uh, massage that front bolt back in. Simple reversal of the process here. The rest is on the forward of the arm. And I'll hold that in the front while I look at the bolt. the bolt through we just want to get this uh, get started on this nut Bit of a 
dexterity challenge here. Just snugging that down for now. We'll torque it to spec after we get the front bolt uh, in. All right, we've got a good look at the at the front here. Um, I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but the bolt hole's not really lined up, so we're gonna have to kind of tension backwards a little bit. All right, another crank or two on the ratchet strap. Not easy, but we got it. To start. Go. All right, that bolt is on. And that's a pretty new control arm. So um, we'll go ahead and torque those down. So again, I'm just sticking this right in here just to provide some resistance. Let's just go ahead and get it snug tight. It's designed to, so just it stays. Okay. And now we'll torque that down. 55 is the magic number. And there it is. Okay, let's do the same to the back. Ridge, so that's a, a good deal. There it is. Okay. Upper control arm is torqued. And installed. So I'm going to release these uh, ratchet straps. We're going to work on this guy right here. Um, it's 21 millimeters front and back. So closed end wrench on the back. Just like that. 
I'm going to keep that bolt in there for a minute. Discuss a little bit about what's going on on the front. So if you look right here on this front one, there is a cam that um, helps set some of the uh, angle of the axle. So this cam inside has a square post that will lengthen or shorten the throw here. So one of the things we want to do is um, go ahead and um, we're going to mark the cam placement so that when we reinstall, we can reinstall in the same placement. So I'm going to grab a Sharpie and we're going to label that thing up. All right, let's go ahead and mark this cam placement before we loosen it. So I'm just going to make a little Sharpie mark on the cam washer and on the shoulder here. That way we'll have a reference point when we get back um, to putting it back on. This one is also 21 millimeters on both front and back. Not as ideal as that one. I'm gonna flip that around. We'll use the, um, we'll use the impact wrench on the, on the bolt side, not on the nut side, which actually, See how we did there. You can actually see a previous cam marking in yellow paint there. Um, all right, um, now that we've done that, let's see if we can back this bolt out. Um, these are, uh, it's a square cam bolt inside. Let's see if we can just give it a, some gentle nudging. With my favorite tool in the garage. Oh, it actually I just wanted to come right out. So um, there we go. Not too bad. Sometimes these are seized up inside. All right, so let's get the back bolt off. Okay, just a little finesse in there. So a little massaging here, and we can get this uh, rear bolt in. Go ahead and start that guy. Now 
line up the cam bolt with our marks that we made previously. And torque it. Okay, that's one set of control arms done. Looking good, I'm happy about that new rubber on, especially on that lower. All right, for this uh, next bit, we're gonna get ready to replace uh, upper and lower ball joints, but to do that, we're gonna have to take off uh, caliper, rotor. Um, we're gonna actually pull the axle, uh, the inner axle out, and um, basically we're gonna bear this knuckle up so that we can get to these two. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's start by taking off the caliper. And just so they'll go in smoother, I'm hitting these threads with a little PV blaster because they're pretty, pretty nasty. Now this joint right in here is going to be a little bit seized just because it's Probably been on there forever. I don't want to dent my dust cover. But I'm gonna try and give a few wraps in there just to... Um, starting to give me a little loosening. So you wanna be careful to not get into the race that's... Um, you can see after some gentle tapping, it's ready to just wiggle itself out. There we go. So the idea here is go ahead and pull this out. You want to support the axle as it's coming out so it's not rubbing along the, the edge there. And now we finally have access to our ball joints. So we're gonna just start just like we have with all the others, take the cotter pins off. Some of that corrosion. 
penetrating fluid uh, do its magic while we work on this top one. Placed a time or two. But I'm not the original owner, so that's not information I have. Pick up a lower one first. We can reach up here with an extension with the, with the impact. So let's work on this other guy. Um, this one is 30 millimeters. There we go. So on this particular one, that cotter pin was actually um, so fixed in there, it just sort of sheared off. So I just sort of powered it off. You can see the residue of the cotter pin, but oh well, that's, uh, that guy is not being used again. So at this point in the game, we wanna um, go ahead and see if we can You know, we gotta get this whole knuckle off before I can get up to that. So I'm gonna have to work on that some more by hand.
All right, so let's go ahead and loosen this top one. All right. Now, we're gonna thread the bottom one back on because when we, we're gonna give this some wraps with the hammer and we don't want it to fall down and hit the floor. So put that bottom one on just a few. Not really too difficult. Just take some persuading, and there's our knuckle. Set that guy aside. Uh, now we can access um, these ball joints. We're going to use a ball point uh, ball joint uh, press set and um, see if we can't get these two guys out. Let me grab that kit real quick. All right, so. This upper joint is where we're gonna start first. Um, this thing is so gunked up, we're gonna take a minute to get some of the debris off. Just a bunch of old grease and dirt. I wanna be able to know where the metal is and where the ball joint is. So. Clean this guy up a little bit, plus it'll help our joint press not, we don't want that thing slipping on us. By any means. So on this guy, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, find a cup that fits on the top here. It is too small. I'm going to go up my size to right here. Something like that. Good practice on these ball joint kits is to always make sure they're, they're lubed. We'll just hit that with a little, little penetrating fluid just so it's not running dry. Um, especially on these long um, part store loaners, you know, they sometimes have been a little bit abused. Okay, so on this guy, um, what we're going to do is we're going to just be pushing up like that, so. Alright. 
this particular motor tool didn't come with a ton of cups and uh, those options. And so I'm gonna do a little improvising here. That pop is exactly what we want to have happen. That was basically the um, the joint breaking free. So you can see we came up a good eighth of an inch there. So that's, that's always the initial part that's hardest. Um, so it should be a lot easier going now. Always take a moment to get it figured out exactly what combination of pieces and parts are we aiming at. I don't know if you can tell, I'm actually using the lower castle nut from this lower ball joint to be my presser. It's just about the right size if I can get it to stay centered. So one piece of concern is just these threads. I don't want them scoring the inner um, ball joint surface on this um, on this part. So I'm just gonna use a little, uh, this is actually just cut off an old like caulking tube. 
I'm just gonna put it in there as a little bit of a buffer, just so I don't have to worry about marring that inner surface. Just gonna lightly open up these things in here. Um, a the rest in there, so. All right, we're ready to put this ball joint in. Gonna find the right combination of sleeves and tools here. A little plastic protector up in here. begin with we're just going to use just this until the ball joint gets flush here um, and then we'll have to switch out and try something up another combination
All right, so we're just gonna continue on. One thing of note is that this um, ear kind of tapers. So I'm using this washer right now to kind of even it out because it was starting to drive it a little cockeyed. So once I get the bearing down to where it meets that, I'll pull this out. We should be out of uh, danger then of it being in wrong. those castle nuts. Um, nut, by the way, upper is a 22, and this one's gonna, uh, we'll try to snug this guy up. Upper gets 75 pounds. insert our axle. Um, so key on this is to try and keep the axle tip from dragging on the bottom of the axle tube. Um, tends to be where some of the gunk is. And we will um, keep going on that. Let me go grab that. on uh, a little grease on this just to make it a little easier. Forgot we needed to put in our cotter pins on these uh, castle nuts, so we'll do that before we get going too far. Um, if you need to line these up after you torque them, you can just tighten a little more. Uh, next space where you can see the hole.
Okay, castle knights are in, or powder pins are in. All right, got those powder pins in, so let's get back to reinstalling the hub. All right, we're gonna do some setup here on the bench for um, our tie rod, our truck bar, and our drag link. And so the, what, what we wanna do to start with is we wanna do the initial setup um, as close as possible to the previous um, length. So what you wanna do is measure center to center, and then when we screw in our new tie rod ends, um, we'll match that and that'll hopefully get us in an initial setup. Obviously, you're gonna wanna get a professional alignment before, um, you know, after doing all this work, but um, we, um, we wanna get it as close as possible. So, um, the center there to there, we're right at about 41 and 7 eighths, a little, little less than that maybe. And so what we're gonna do is set this old guy aside. I'll back those back out. I like to put a little anti-seize on um, parts like this that are gonna be needing possibly future adjustment. Well, thank you. Okay, we'll repeat, repeat that on the passenger side. Is ready. Um, I'm gonna just snug these um, retainers for now, um, just so they're not flopping around loose. 13 millimeters on both sides. I just don't like them jumping around on me. Once we get under the Jeep, we'll get those in their permanent position and get them properly tightened.
side, but over here they went really small. So 12 millimeter is the other end of the bolt in. Okay, we're snug. There we go. That guy is ready for install. Set that aside while we work on our next piece. Okay, let's go ahead and have a look at our track bar. Gonna match this guy up. It's a beautiful new piece of, of uh, beefy metal. Deal. So on this one, we've got this um, this adjustment sleeve that comes with the kit. So that's going to go on there, and then we've got our um, our tie right end. It's real easy to tell the difference. This one is a much bigger diameter than the um, than the one we just installed. Grease there, it's popping out. Okay, so again, we'll just measure and we'll work on getting this uh, this guy kind of preset. So we're at, right at 36 and a quarter. Um, it works its way up as you thread on so um, to get it started there and kind of leave a little dabble do you This time we'll remember our, our uh, locking collar. measure. We said let's see about 36 and a half. So got about a half inch to come.
a rough setting. Once again, these are going to bug me if they're flopping all around, so I'm going to serve those up just a smidge. Very similar to the packing material here. Slide these up so they're not flying all over the way. Installing. We'll probably loosen them a little bit. Kind of flying the ointment. The should be a square, square hole that's holding that, and it's not. those once we're underneath um, get them where they're easy to get at so that is our um, drag link ready to roll and set this old one aside and this is our track bar there is nothing to set up on this guy just take off the shipping cap and it is ready to go. Alright, let's get under that front of the Jeep and start installing these. Let's go ahead and get it. These, uh, these components installed under here. Uh, just for fun, we're gonna start with the drag link. And so this is gonna go from the Pittman arm right here um, over to uh, the knuckle. Um, so we are gonna get that installed. See if I have a shorter um, 18. Real quick, that's that tight spot up there above the pit now. All right, got a, got a regular regular socket instead of the deep throw. This 
one's an awkward position because it's just right in next to some um, power steering hard line. cotter pins while we're, while we're going. So one note on this kit, um, just be careful of your packaging. You don't wanna um, throw away the packaging from these um, long components too easy because you can easily miss your cotter pin. Uh, so just get those out if you're cleaning up as you go. Get those out before you um, lose them in the mix. Okay, and that is our drag link. Let's go ahead, as long as we're right here, let's go ahead and install the steering stabilizer into its hole in the drag link. I'm gonna just adjust the The steering on over a smidge to help that line up a little better. All right, so we've got steering stabilizer. Just plunk that through the drag link and then zip this guy in. Here's a tip for. If this is too firm, loosen the, the back nut on your stabilizer. It may depend on what kind you have. But we're gonna it with a impact gun so we're just gonna
Okay. All right, that is our drag link for now. I'm gonna go ahead and snug up these uh, these bolts. Remember, these are the ones with the square shaft on the back, but I was having trouble with the uh, one square shaft doing its job, so. Um, All right. Next up, we are going to work on the um, track bar. The track bar is going from this frame mount right here to this uh, axle mount down below. So it is a bolt joint up top and just a bolt through um, on the bottom. Let's get the ball joint side in. straight through, bolt and a washer. The easy job of wiggling that guy into place. Side with a blind hole, it's another one of these famous Jeep um, nuts with a with a washer, um, kind of a metal bar of a washer. So we gotta support that from the inside. But it seems to have turned itself around in here, so I'm trying to. Get the end of it fish down so that it can hang where it's supposed to. There we go. So you can see it's kind of a little little contraption, and there is a little hole right under here that I didn't realize when I was removing it. But Fortunately, this tab really gives you something to position it with. Okay. I'm not going to torque that all the way until I get this side up. And we're going to have some little bit of a positioning challenge, I think. Okay, so we're going to use our ratchet strap again um, to just bring the axle over relative to the frame. Actually, the reality is since the axle's on the jack stands, we're gonna be pulling the, the frame that way. So let's give this a 
click or two, maybe another, another click. And we're just gonna go till it's pretty much lined up. So let's see if we can get that guy up in there. The other problem I'm having is uh, I'm not quite getting enough clearance on the bolts up here. So I've got to find a way to kind of snug this guy up um, so we can get the, the nut started. Let me uh, move to the other side so that I can do some convincing. All right. I think I got a few threads on. down both sides of this uh, truck car. Let's see, uh, this is 155 on this side and 65 up there on the wall stud. our 55. It's just a bolt, so no uh, cotter pin needed on that side. All right, let's take off this strap. Sometimes you just got to get a little creative. Obviously, when we took off all of this, it just sort of made our axle sort of floating free and it just wiggled a little out of uh, out of its alignment. So that is a beefy track bar. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, don't skimp on a track bar. All right, we have just a couple components left on this build. Next up is this, um, is the tie rod. And uh, tie rod's gonna go, remember we marked it. Um, the D on the driver's side. So that's going to go up into the um, knuckle there and we'll turn it so that it's going into the drag link here. Um, so 
where I'm already sitting right here. I might as well put on the drag link side. Uh, brand new joints don't give you a ton of thread when you first start them, so gotta kind of apply some pressure here. Get that done started. Probably about all that I want to do on that until, well, it's got plenty of play. Let's go ahead and bring that over to the knuckle. So we're going right here with this guy. There we go. Now we're going to actually be able to steer our vehicle. Again. the other end of this tie rod in, so.
cotter pin on the other side, and then we'll tighten up these adjusters, get them snug down, and we're here on our way to the sway bars. Okay, take care of these guys, and we are there. Um, 13s on this one. I think that other one had a 13 in. and a 12. get 20 pounds of, of uh, torque. Helps if I grab the right wrench. I don't want to over torque that, so I'm going to switch over to my torque wrench.
Jones. All right. Uh, we are ready for our um, sway bars, so we'll turn over here, take care of that driver side first. Okay, we're gonna connect the sway bar down to the, to the bracket. Um, kit comes with a, uh, obviously a new top bolt, but also a new end bolt for the other end of that Torx. Uh, tight while we position everything and if you remember we have this uh, T55 torque screw so they give us a new bolt love that since the Finger tight. Let's grab the tools we need to. Okay. Got a 18 millimeter on the back and a Torx uh, T55 on this side. Check the torque on that. All right. Seems to be a little bit of difference of opinion on torque on these sway bar lengths. I'm gonna do the bottom first, just so when we tighten down the top, it's um, more stable. So the best information I can find seems to indicate 70 pounds on this guy. Um, let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna watch that bushing. Make sure it's not deforming too much. for this top, top bolt. Um, some sources say 27. Let's see what that does in here first. All right, let me find the wrench for that. Okay, this top bolt's a 15 millimeter. seem about right. I didn't seem to over torque it. All right, let's flip over to the other side. All right, we're here on the passenger side. Get the camera straight. Believe it or not, this is the final piece on our install. And then I'm putting the tires back on. Finger tighten 
in that top bolt. Definitely want to do this uh, sway bar linkage with the axle unloaded. Because um, if you've got different pressure on one side or the other, it's going to bind. All right, same deal. We'll start with the bottom and move on up to the top from there. Right there, so. there it is. Yeah, those top top bolts don't have to be real intense. They're pretty easy going. All right, we are ready to reinstall some some wheels. So that's gonna wrap it up for my review and the install of this 17-piece steering and suspension kit, fitting all 1997 to 2006 TJ Wranglers. And remember, for all things Jeep, keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.